okay, iCloud is building a private browser into iOS 15. I just upgraded my iPad and my iPhone to iOS 15. It's got some cool features. Uh, one of the features I like is when you share an Apple Music link, when you go to Apple Music and you play the track, it shows you who shared it with you. Just, just kind of like a nice little elegant touch of iMessage moving over uh, into apps, right? Where you can see who forwarded you that. Another interesting piece uh, that's notable is I believe FaceTime is now able, when you do a FaceTime group call, you're able to get people into that call who are on Android. So lots of interesting, you know, features. And I think actually that when you share a, a podcast as well, it will say Jason shared this podcast with you. So SMS all your friends your this week in startups and all in and you get credit for it in their app when they're playing it. It just gives a little notice that this was shared with you by Jcal. Okay, so back episode 1204 on This Week in Startups, we talked about how Apple was introducing uh, app tracking transparency. This forces developers to ask users if they want their data shared. So Apple has been on this mission to protect your privacy, not in China, not in Russia, but here in the USA. You know, they obviously have to abide by local laws. And so um, it's privacy is their selling point. They are pitting themselves as the anti-Facebook and the anti-Google. That is Apple's selling point. And you know what? People are buying it. We always said at some point, people are going to care about privacy. Well, I think it's actually happening because Apple, which is just absolutely world class at taking complicated features and making them simple, uh, is doing that. You may have seen one feature where when you sign up for an app, uh, it says, hey, would you like to sign up with your email or would you like to mask your email? Just a nice little elegant touch there where you can keep some of your privacy and Apple enforce that on people. If you want to have your app in the app store, you have to offer Apple login. And so Apple login is becoming a thing. When Facebook does Facebook login, they're doing it to track you around the web. That's why they're doing Facebook connect login. They want to track you, get data on you and then sell it. When Apple does it, right? Apple login is not so Apple can get data on you because they don't monetize your data. What they do with your data is nothing. They store it on your phone and they will not let anybody have it. As we know from the San Bernardino uh, terrorist shooting case where they wouldn't unlock the phone. I mean, they, if they won't unlock a terrorist phone, they're not going to unlock yours. So I think that's a pretty reasonable position we can all agree on. So Apple is now uh, created a private relay. And it's in beta. Uh, and the iPad is part of this. So what it does basically is you will not be tracked when you're using Safari. And so it's a really slick feature, you can turn it on as you see here in the video. Uh, and when you go search around the web, it's basically like, I guess you could think of it like tour, I'm not sure exactly how they're doing the private relay. But the idea is, it, whatever you're searching for, it's even better than say being in incognito mode. Because even in incognito mode or private mode, they still have your IP address and they might have ways of identifying you. With this, what they're doing is uh, like a VPN or, you know, maybe like the Tor network, when you send your request in Safari, they go and collect the page for you and then serve it to you. And they're like this intermediary. I believe if somebody thinks it's different, let me know. And uh, as somebody said in the live audience here, part of the Nodi gang, uh, Jekko says, uh, just use the Brave browser. Brave browser is another uh, great browser for removing tracking. But having it on uh, the phone and having the hardware work towards protecting your privacy is a major, major step in uh, all of our privacy being uh, protected. So in the announcement on the website, normally when you browse the web, information containing your web traffic, such as your DNS records and your IP address, can be seen by your network provider and websites you visit. So network providers will also collect this information uh, about what you visit, and they might be selling it, or they might have agreements with the Googles and Facebooks and advertisers of the world. So all your data is being shared in many different ways. And so uh, when that data is shared, you can be identified, located, you get the idea. So the first relay is operated by Apple, it allows your IP address to be seen by your network provider, but your DNS records are encrypted. So neither party can see web addresses you are accessing. And the second relay is operated by a quote, third party content provider, it creates a temporary IP address, and decrypts the website's address connecting you to the site you're trying to reach. So just like I said, maybe a little bit like the Tor network, if you're aware of that, which has, you know, multiple hops and all kinds of bad people use that for bad reasons, you know, not not just for privacy. 
So I think it's another huge win for Apple. And I think it's something they're going to be able to keep putting pressure um, and differentiating themselves versus Android and versus Facebook. And this is really going to impact their businesses. And I think Apple, because they make their profits from selling you hardware that is massively overpriced, you can opt to pay for that. What would I do if I was Facebook? I would come up with Facebook VIP. I would come up with Android or Google VIP, where if you pay Google $100 a year, $10 a month, you get an ad free experience and no tracking. Both of those companies should do that now. Because that would then give them the high road when they get pulled in front of Congress, senators, and legislators and people who want to break up big tech, just very simple. All you have to do is say, period, end of story. Uh, if you want to have a free service, you pay with advertising and we sell your data in an anonymous way to advertisers and you see target advertising or you can pay 10 bucks a month you're paying 15 bucks a month for netflix pay 10 bucks a month for our services you know arguably you get more from youtube and google than you do from netflix right if you could only have one google and youtube or netflix which would you pick i mean it's a pretty obvious choice you would go with google uh and youtube so i pay for youtube to turn the ads off i would pay for google to turn the ads off so uh, there have been some uh, app tracking transparency features uh, that are rippling through the advertising space. I'm seeing it in some startups who are worried about this, where you used to be able to target people a little bit more aggressively. And actually, Casper Mattress recently announced they were laying off their CMO, CTO, and COO. And an anonymous founder in the DT space told TechCrunch these layoffs were likely due to Casper's difficulty selling product since the change is made retargeting much less effective, you know, to find valuable uh, customers, iPhone users. So let me explain that and unpack what they're saying there. It could be that Casper is just a company that has had its best day and companies like eight sleep are a better product. And full disclosure, I'm a modest investor in eight sleep and a fan of the product. I use it every night, in fact. <laughs> um, but putting that aside, what's happening here is uh, you used to be able to do something called uh, look alike and retargeted audiences. What that means is you say, hey, here's the customers who bought Casper mattresses. And then the algorithm at Facebook and Google says, okay, here's more people like that. And they use any number of data sources and algorithms to figure that out. Well, Apple is saying, yeah, you can't do that anymore. We're not going to let you track people on their phones. And what that means is those lookalike audiences and that retargeting is much less effective. Now you're just maybe targeting an audience by geolocation or just Americans or just iPhone users, right? And iPhone users, uh, you know, they may be a small percentage of all phone users, but they happen to skew as the most profitable customers in the world. So what Apple is really doing is they're just really decimating Google and Facebook's ability to target the best, most elite users. And that is uh, makes us a very entertaining uh, thing to watch. In today's startup landscape, committing to security and compliance is vital for growth, and proof of your company's security posture has never been more important. As you scale, you might start to receive more SOC 2 requests from customers, and that's where Drata comes in. Drata is an advanced automation platform used by some of the world's leading chief information security officers, or CISOs. Drata will help you successfully meet requirements, support enterprise deal flow, and continually track compliance. Drata also helps customers easily prepare for and clear SOC 2 and other audits so you can go from zero to audit ready in a matter of weeks. Need more? Take it from Philip Martin, Chief Security Officer at Coinbase, and here's his quote. It became clear to me right away that Drata is an engineering powerhouse. The solution they've developed is well ahead of other market players. Their approach to deep native integrations provides users with the most advanced automation available. So check out Drata's five-star reviews on G2 and see why companies like ClearCo, Smart Recruiter, and the Good Face Project work with Drata for their compliance needs. Twist listeners can get 15% off and waived implementation fees at drata.com slash twist, D-R-A-T-A dot com slash twist.